So we're going to be examining Kepler's laws. And for our purpose right now here, we're going to examine Kepler's first law. So with a bit of background, Kepler has three laws relating to planetary orbits around the sun. And basically Kepler was an astronomer who basically studied the orbits around the sun based on Brahe's, um, who was his teachers, basically measurements back in like the 16th century or so. So Kepler's first law is actually has a name. All of Kepler's laws have a name. And his first law is called the law of ellipses. Now, if you're not sure what an ellipse is, it's basically just a mathematical term to basically say um, an oval or egg shape, if you like. And the law is actually very simple when stated. The law simply says all orbits around the sun are ellipses or elliptical in shape. And you'll note that basically he's saying they're not circles, but they're ellipses. And with a bit of extra detail with the sun at one of the foci of the ellipse. So this might make not make too much sense to you, but it will be pretty clear as it goes on. So first law basically just goes conceptually, it's the law of ellipses and in the context of Kepler, he was only really studying planets around the sun, but we can generalize this nowadays to basically all orbits around the sun or not are ellipses. And with the sun or with a thing that's being orbited at the foci of the ellipse. So firstly, what is the foci? Well, you don't need to get too much into it, but the idea is we have these sort of shapes like this. And an ellipse roughly might look something like this. So if you have an ellipse, then we will have certain parts of it. We won't label all parts, but this will be the center, kind of like the center of the circle right in the middle. But we will have actually these points, which I'm not necessarily drawing in the exact right spot, just to give you guys the rough idea. These are called focus. This focus one, focus two, and together, collectively, they're the foci, which is a plural of focus. And basically, we're just going, OK, so if the Earth is going around the sun, so let's say this is the Earth, then that actually means the sun is going to be right here, or, or one of them, one or the other. So that's basically what Kepler's law is saying. So in more general terms, all orbits, for example, the moon around the Earth, or asteroids around the sun, all orbits are ellipses. And with a thing that's being, or that's the, the central mass, if you like, is at the, one of the foci, not the center of the ellipse, but as one of the foci of the ellipse. And so I think the most important thing you want to take from this law is, therefore, based on this law, orbits are actually circular. Well, not generally. I mean, they could be, they're almost never actually a circle, but that's probably a key point you want to take from this. But having said that, for our course, we assume our orbits are circular. For simplicity. So although in real life orbits are not necessarily circular, we assume they are for our course, just because you need to do fairly much more advanced maths than then required for our course to do um, ones with orbits. Whereas circles, as long as we talk to about circular motion and central acceleration and so forth, then, then you're okay. Now, you might be looking at this and going, that looks doesn't quite look right. And is it really an ellipse? Well, let's take a look at a few examples. So these are sort of things drawn to scale. And we're just showing the Earth's orbit around the sun for the moment. And let us take a look at the orbit itself. Now, don't do get out any rulers. Don't really do anything like that. Just simply look at this sort of shape and go, hmm, does it look like a circle or not? And if you take a look at it, you might go, that kind of looks like a circle. 
Okay, maybe yes, maybe no. And we'll take a look at Mars. You might have a different opinion on this, but that might look maybe like a circle. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. These are all the planets of our solar system, starting from Earth, going outward. Neptune, Pluto. So if you look at Pluto, I mean, it still kind of looks like a circle, but I guess it might be a little bit more obvious now that the sun's definitely not at the center of the circle. So even if you did think Pluto was a, Pluto's orbit was a circle, which you may or may not, I mean, everyone's different to how, where they draw the line, but I think it's probably reasonably obvious now the sun's no longer in the center of the circle if it was a circle. And let's go now cycle through Mercury. Mercury kind of maybe is a bit like Pluto in that sense, not in the exact center and Venus. So we've run through all the planets and just quickly running through them again from Mercury outward. You can probably just taking a quick look at this and go, well, they kind of look like circles, but some of them clearly aren't a perfect circle. And it's actually this reason why for a long time, people before Kepler came along, people thought they were circles and they actually had to do all sorts of weird things to try and get around with epicycles and things, things we won't get into, but basically to try and get around the fact. So now the thing is, an ellipse is a circle. Well, sorry, I should say a circle is an ellipse. So in the same way that a square is a rectangle in the sense that it's a special rectangle, a rectangle is a shape that looks like that. But if all four sides are equal, if, if all four sides were equal, then you would get something that looked more like this, in which case we call that a square, but it's still a rectangle. And in the same way, an ellipse can ha include circles, right? An ellipse is when they're not equal, the, the left, what we call the semi-major axis and the semi-minor axis or the major and minor axes are not equal. But a circle is when they are trying to be equal like that. And so therefore you could actually leave the door open and for a circle and this number here, eccentricity over here actually is a measure of how much of a circle it is basically. And the idea is the closer to zero, the more circular. A zero would be a perfect circle. And so you don't need to know too much about this for your course, but if we just run through the numbers again, and this time we'll focus on the number, and you can basically see for Mercury, it's 0 0.2. So it's one of the more elliptical ones in our solar system. But you can, even for that, you can sort of see it's a bit of a circle. But if we now make it a bit more obvious, there are times when it's certainly further away from the sun and times when it's closer. Running through the planets one by one, Venus, you can see it's, I mean, it's very close to zero and it's, even with it all drawn out, it's very close to a circle. Earth, again, is not a perfect circle, but pretty close. Mars, you can see it being a little bit off center with an east interest of 0.09. Jupiter is again, actually close to being a circle. Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto is again, one of the ones that if you look at the overall shape, might look like a circle, but actually on calculation, it's a bit closer to the ellipse. And you have to remember, we're doing these things, they were doing these things 500 years ago, also with maybe a telescope, maybe not. So there's all these also issues with measurements as well. So they did a pretty good job given what they had. So that's why it wasn't immediately apparent, but Kepler came along and said, actually, they're all ellipses. And that actually made the maths more difficult in some ways because you have to be able to do maths with ellipses, but it solved a lot of problems in terms of you don't need to um, sort of worry about all these epicycle things, which were kind of a made up thing. And we can apply it as well to things that are very clearly elliptical. So this is an example of Halley's Comet. This Halley's Comet, a pure glance would tell you that it is not a circle at all. And any, ellip any ellipse has what are called aphelion and perihelion, but we don't need to worry about these terms. But the key point is the distance from the sun will change. In this case, it's getting far away and now it's getting closer and closer and closer until it gets to its minimum point 
and then a maximum point. And just taking a look at the comet as an example, we can kind of join up these lines. And you can probably see quite clearly here that the comet is not going at a constant speed around the sun, which in a way is going to lead us into rule number two. And we'll basically now head into law two.